All right, I was asked by some people to do a video reaction to Bear Independence video, the militia versus the government. It's a 30 minute video. I'm going to pin it in a comment and also in the description of this video. Now, this video that he did came from a question he received. Can civilians be as badass as infantry? And overall, his answer on that was no. And he goes through giving reasons why. Now, a lot of the things he mentions in this video is stuff I've mentioned in the past. Uh, I will put some linked videos in here in the description and then pinned comment. First video is painful or uncomfortable militia truths. The next video is are we doomed that there is no overall militia leader? And the last video is militia, what you should be doing right now. That last video I made soon after January 6th of 2021, it's still relevant. The things I tell you that you should be doing right now in that video it's still as relevant today as it was two years ago. Now, I have some bullet points that I pulled from the video as I watched it, and I'll give you my thoughts on this stuff. Uh, just forewarning, I agree with over 90% of what he said. There are some things, though, where we disagree. Now, if someone can, please forward this to Bear Independence so that he can see this. Now, first off, he said that if you have the Minuteman equipment, you should train with it. I 100% agree with that. I have seen so damn many people in the militia, in, in uh, civil defense groups, in survival groups, who have fancy equipment, have fancy weapons, that have no idea how to use any of it. They have no idea, will it work for them in the field in the way they want to use it for? And they just get the stuff because, hey, that's really cool, this YouTuber over here said I should get it, or this magazine over here said I, said I should get it, or I seen the Navy SEALs in this video using this piece of equipment, so I had to get it. Learn how to use what you get, plain and simple. And that goes from your firearms to your sleeping bag and your, your equipment for inclement weather, meaning rain, snow, wind, the bad stuff. Learn how to use it. Train with it as much as you can. Find out if it's durable enough to last. You're probably going to find that those fancy boots that you got and that fancy camouflage pattern uniform you bought isn't up to snuff. It may work good for hunting, but it's not going to last you as a resistance fighter in the field fighting for weeks, months, potentially years. Find that information out now and act accordingly. So I agree with him on that one. The next one is men today are not as good as men 250 years ago. I agree with that. Look at the average male right now. Look at yourself in the mirror. And yes, I fall in this category too. Fat, out of shape. We all got weight we got to lose. Get off your rear end. Get out there. Exercise. Hell, I did a video on that because someone requested suggestions on how to develop their own PT program, which means physical training. Bear Independent didn't say what PT meant. He uses a lot of acronyms, but he doesn't explain what it, those means, and he basically belittles you. Yeah, can't talk. He belittles you through the video because you don't understand the meaning of an acronym. Another problem is a lot of people are lazy. They have the attitude of, well, if I can buy a piece of equipment and that solves the problem, I'm good. No, get out there, use it. Don't sit on your butt eating Cheetos watching football or sitting on that bar stool down in those beers one after another. Shut up, combat cameraman. No comments. Keep it to yourself. 
And another way that we're not as good as the men 250 years ago that fought the first American Revolution, lack of skills. We don't have the survival skills that they did. They used to be able to go out into the woods with a wool blanket, a hatchet, and maybe a fork or a spoon and a pot and be able to survive with that for weeks, months, years on end. How many of us can do that? Very damn few. And also back then, 250 years ago, every male in every city, town, village trained with their local militia on a regular basis. It was expected of you to always be prepared to defend your family and your neighbors. That doesn't happen nowadays. Get out there, do something about it. Start training. Now, Bear Independence said that the modern day militia movement is now an excuse to dress up with equipment that they never use, weapons that are never zeroed, that essentially the modern militia movement is a bunch of LARPers. For the most part, I agree with that. There is a decent percentage, especially now, post-COVID, post-January 6th, the people that are still identifying themselves as militia, for the most part, they've been through some stupid times, they've stuck with it. You know, for the most part, those aren't the LARPers anymore. These are people taking it seriously. So I do kind of disagree, but I also agree with them. Uh, good example on where I agree with him on that. Just go look at the people that comment on Risky Krisky's channel. I'm sorry, buddy, but seriously, you got a hell of a lot of LARPers who think they're just playing Minecraft in your comments section. They need to wake up, take shit more seriously. Okay, next one. And this one I do disagree with, Bear Independent. He said that infantry are always doing infantry stuff, and you aren't, so you won't stand a chance against infantry. No. Okay, I was active duty. I was engineer, not infantry. And I can tell you... <laughs> We spent more time in the barracks playing on a PlayStation or an Xbox than we did training to do our missions in combat. And that was, you know, years ago. From what I've heard, it's even worse now. Okay, the current U.S. military, and it doesn't matter what branch, is spending 95% of their time on social justice training, pronoun training, uh, principles of Marxism, they may not be told that, sexual harassment training, and all these other BS trainings, which are just meant to teach these soldiers who, and Marines, and sailors, and airmen, that they're a bunch of worthless, you know, over-testosteroned men who are the scourge of society and that they need to be subservient to literally the w most worthless fucking people on the planet. And when I say that, I'm not talking women or blacks or Jews or any of that. I'm talking, they're trying to teach the people in the military to be subservient to leftist, woke pieces of shit who really cannot decide what bathroom they want to use at that given minute who can't decide do they prefer looking at a vagina or do they prefer looking at a penis. That is what they're concentrating on on their training. They're not training for war. I literally just had a conversation with a National Guardsman here about a month ago at my work. And he said that they haven't conducted a PT test or done PT in over two years. He said that they haven't conducted any training in the field since the start of 2020. They've done no combat training, none for their mission in combat. Now, for those who are not aware of this, the military rotation, especially active duty, is 
a unit basically cycles 100% everyone out of the unit every three years. So we're at the point where a lot of those lower level people, say E5 and under, sergeants and under, they're rotating out now if they came in right before COVID. So there's a huge brain drain going on and skill drain. So I disagree with Bear Independent on that one. Okay, the infantry does not train 24-7 to do infantry shit. They do not spend every day at the range. They do not spend every day knocking in doors at the mount site. They do not spend every day in vehicles patrolling up and down tank trails on the post. Okay, the next one is Bear Independent said, you can buy all the gear and weapons you want, but that doesn't make you special forces. I 100% agree with that. And I have an example on that one. A few years back, in the early days of this channel, the militia unit I was with at that time, we had a guy in that unit who figured he could spend his way out of everything. And he always had to have the latest model Glock. He always had the latest, hottest shit accessory on the AR. And that AR had to be the greatest one that was on the market at the time. He patterned his gear like he was a Navy SEAL operator. We were at a range one day. The commander wanted us to show up in uniform with our gear because we were going to run through some uh, stress shooting on the range. I was loading my next round of mag next batch of magazines for the next round of training up on the firing line. And uh, this individual, who I'm not going to give his name, came over to me, called everyone else in the unit over. And he said, here's the, compar the comparison. Pointed to himself, said Special Forces. Pointed to me, said Regular Army. Back to himself, Special Forces. Back to me, Regular Army. My comment to him was, at least I know how to use what I have. Now, when we were up on the range shooting, take a guess between the two of us, who was the one who missed almost every single one of his targets? It was Mr. PX Ranger, the guy who thought he was Special Forces. He would do his push-ups, do his side straddle hops, his jumping jacks, do the laps back and forth on the range, whatever was required, get up there, try to shoot, and he couldn't hit a fucking thing. I got up there, did my stuff, and all you heard was ping, 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 as the steel targets went down. When it was over on paper targets, my rounds were nailing, were in the silhouette, for the most part, in the chest, and in the head area, depending on how close we were to the target, when he was up there shooting with his fancy Glock with the freaking uh, sights on it and, you know, his AR with a scope, you know, I'd say nine out of ten rounds were outside the edge of the silhouette. They were in the white on the paper. Just because you can buy Special Forces shit doesn't mean you are Special Forces level shit. Okay? In truth, you're just shit. Okay, then he came in here. Next thing he brought up was, can you fight the government? Overall, he said no. I disagree with that. Now, he, there's some subs on this to when he brought himself up to the answer to that question. First off, he said he talked about defense spending and how much the military gets in budgets every year compared to other countries around the world. I can tell you from being in Defense spending does not equal effectiveness. There is a massive, massive amount of fraud, waste, and corruption in the Department of Defense. Very little of that actual funding actually goes for the equipment, the training, you know, to the troops themselves. There was a huge problem before 9-11 under Clinton where you had all these funds going to bases to modernize the barracks for the troops. 
Well, quite a few of the post commanders, the people, those officers that ran those bases, those generals and those Fulberg colonels, were taking most of that funding that was meant to pay for maintaining the barracks and upgrading the barracks, and they were upgrading their homes. I remember one post commander, he got caught spending over $1 million remodeling his kitchen. Another one spent almost a million dollars remodeling his damn bathroom, for God's sakes. Military spending does not equal effectiveness, especially now with our, us concentrating on woke SJW training. He also said that uh, we have no leadership in the militia movement, which means we're uncoordinated and we're doomed. I did a video on that. Go to the correct one in the uh, pinned videos. He said, lacking medical support. I agreed. Okay, we concentrate on basic first aid. We don't have those uh, connections, that networking to what to do with that casualty after we've performed first aid. Do we have a doctor? Do we have a nurse? Do we have a veterinarian that could fill in as a doctor in the unit? so that that casualty that we provided first aid on can get patched up, can get those bullets, that those fragments, the shrapnel removed from their body, sewn back up, blood pumped back into them, IVs pumped back into them, so that they'll survive on to the next fight. And that's lacking over our, at least 95% of the militia units that are out there. Try to find those people. Hell, even getting an EMT is better than nothing. But you still need that doctor. You still need that nurse. Or as I said, a veterinarian. A veterinarian does get trained on the basics of human physiology before they specialize in their areas with animals. A veterinarian can transfer over. They just got to do the studying on their own, the practice on their own to get to that level. Now, another, the next area he said is intel networks, meaning spies and observers. I agree. Okay, you need to be talking to the people that can't join you in the field. Explain to them what you need them to do, what they need to look for, how to identify the enemy's equipment, enemy's vehicles, estimates on troop size, and all that stuff. Come up with a way that they can pass information to you. This is stuff I've covered in videos in the past. I've mentioned this stuff here and there, but I haven't explained how to set up the network because truthfully, it's I'm not sure how to do that. But we should be talking to people. Talk to your family members, your friends, the people that agree with you but aren't willing to fight. Get that intelligence network set up. Uh, he talked about uh, everyone wants to concentrate on room clearing. When, if it was him in the situation, he'd just sit on the outside, pour 900 rounds into the building, set it on fire, and say, good enough. I don't agree with that. Uh, even after you pour fire into a building, you turn it into fucking Swiss cheese. You got to go in there. You have to make sure everyone was eliminated. The threat is gone. So you're still going to have to go in there, clear that building room by room, hallway by hallway, going from floor to floor. It still has to be done. And trust me, the pucker factor when you do that, when you realize that, hey, there's a person in there who's pissed off and they have a weapon with a safety off and they're gonna try killing me because I just tried killing them. The pucker factor is gonna be so tight, you're not gonna be able to take a shit for a week afterwards. Okay, he also brought up Camo. You know, this is something a lot of people have brought up. My uh, thing on that is you don't need to be able to transmit from one end of the country to the other. Keep it nice, short, local. Risky Krisky has a bunch of videos on that stuff. He's been uh, focusing on that quite a bit. Go check his stuff out. Uh, Bear then brought up logistics your food supply, maintenance, engineers, your people behind the trigger pullers. And I can tell you as engineers, we're not always behind the lines. A lot of the time we're right next to the infantry, right next to the trigger pullers. 
And if you've been with this channel for a while, you know that is a huge, huge focus of this channel is pointing out logistics and planning for it, preparing for it, which comes into the next thing he brought up, caches in place. That is something I've been harping on for years now. I've done videos on it, you know, giving you guys ideas on, hey, how much should you put in the field? What should you put in the field? What should you think for? Think about on that. And that's where this stuff's going to come in now. A lot, a lot of people, they only focus on how many bullets they have, how many magazines that they have. You may have 10,000 rounds of ammunition, but how much food do you have? Have you done the numbers on that? Calculated how much food do you have? Do you have enough to last seven days, 30 days? How about 120 days? How about six months? How about one year? And that's per person. Not total as a group, but calculated for one person. Each individual person in your group, how much do you have to support them for how long? And then obviously medical supplies. You may have multiple cat tourniquets on you. You may have those compression dressings. How much aspirin do you have? How many band-aids? How much cold medicine? How much anti-diarrhea medicine? How much anti-constipation medicine? How much rolled gauze and gauze pads do you have to put on that casualty after they've come out of surgery. You're not just gonna keep slapping on field dressings. You're gonna transfer over to that stuff. How much of that do you have on hand? Now you're probably watching this saying, well, well, what should I do? How much should I spend? How much should I spend? Okay, let's say for every dollar you spend on ammunition, you should probably spend at least $5 on food items. And it doesn't always have to be freeze dries. It can be ramen noodles, it can be rice and beans, whatever you can get a hold of, whatever can store long term. Look at my cachet series on that stuff. And then for medical supplies, I'd say three to five dollars on that for every one dollar you spend on ammunition. This, the food item, is something you're going to use every day. Even if you only eat one meal a day, you have to eat every day. You're not always going to be shooting. You have 10,000 rounds of ammunition, good for you. Now get to your food. Yeah. Next thing he mentioned was safe houses. That comes to, once again, networking with your family and friends. That if you gotta go, uh, excuse me, go into the city, you have somewhere you can hide, you can stay, you can rest up for that 24 hours or whatever amount of time. Or, you know, you brought someone back. They've uh, gotten medical care at that country doctor's house. Well, where are you going to take that casualty now? Where are you going to transport him to so that he can do recovery or she can do recovery? Not all casualties are combat. You could potentially come across a woman who was gang raped out in the field, who's, hold, who's barely holding on who's going to need medical care, and she's going to need someone to help her psychologically as she gets through it. Have you planned for all that stuff? I know most haven't. Uh, something that I do agree with he brought up next was study resistance operations. I agree wholeheartedly on that. I've mentioned it multiple times. You know, there are special forces manuals out there. Look at those. Read history materials on partisan operations, the Viet Cong, the French resistance, resistance in uh, the Soviet Union during World War II, the Mujahideen fighting in Rhodesia, you know, Central America, South America during the 60s, 70s, 80s. Read as much of that as you can. Get an understanding of how the stuff works. What is realistic? What can you do? You're not always going to be doing the special forces kicking in the door shit. Most of the time, you're probably just going to be setting up, observing an enemy base, observing an enemy patrol, observing an enemy outpost or traffic control point. And then when the time is right, 
you'll put in that IED that you, you figured out how to make out of the materials available. You then maybe take a few well-placed sniper shots and then melt away. Maybe if the enemy comes into your territory and you have enough people, you have the right location, then you can finally ambush them and take some of their shit. But most of your operations are going to be long distance, observation, sniping, mortar attacks if you finally capture a mortar, maybe firing in some rockets if you get someone who builds rockets. You know, you're only limited by your own ingenuity. You're not always going to be slugging it out fist to fist with infantry on their terms. A guerrilla never fights a conventional force, a counterinsurgent on the, the counterinsurgent's terms. They always fight on the guerrilla's terms. Something here that did annoy me, Baron Dependent brought up, if you can't IMT, you can't operate. IMT is individual movement techniques. Low crawl, high crawl, three to five second rush. You know what? If you can't low crawl, does that mean that you can't snipe? If you can't low crawl, does that mean you can't shoot in an ambush? If you can't do an effective three to five second rush, does that mean you're incapable of stalking through the woods without being seen? So I kind of disagree with that. And he brought up, uh, can you fight the government? He says, no, I disagree. And then he brought up a good question of, what if it's not you fighting a tyrannical government? What if it's an invasion of your country and you have to fight alongside those troops, alongside that National Guard that the day before you considered the enemy? Now you have to, you know, rally around the flag and fight back. That's something everyone has to think about. What if we get in a situation where we do get invaded and elements of the government aren't going along with the invasion, they're resisting it. Are you willing to fight alongside those National Guard troops? Are you willing to fight alongside those U.S. Army troops, those Marines or whoever, or those cops? Think about it. That situation could occur. Now, he said, said that uh, the government is not coming for you. I agree with that for most people. Uh, anyone who is thought of that as a potential resistance leader, though, I'd say the chances of the government coming for you actually is pretty high, especially at the beginning of something. So really, all government really has to do is cut off your food, your fuel, your money, your medications, water, everything flowing into an area, release some type of biological or some type of chemical into that area, and, you know, just let everyone die. And he mentions that uh, 12 months post-event after the elites would go into their bunkers, 90% of the people are going to be dead. That number is actually from the estimates after an EMP or CME, EMP, electromagnetic pulse, CME, coronal mass ejection. A good thing to read to get an idea on that is the book, uh, One Second After. I think it was by Fortune. I didn't look it up to find out the uh, author's last name. That gives you an idea. Because in those situations, electronics are fried. Plain and simple. So now, can the civilians fight the government? Yes, there's a lot of veterans out here. We know what we're doing. We are willing to train civilians in a resistance for in a resistance situation. It just takes time. At the beginning of a conflict, it's going to be primarily the people that do have the skills, those military veterans, those law enforcement veterans that are on the Patriot side that are going to do the fighting. And at the same time that's going on, we're training those civilians, getting them ready to join the fight. Plain and simple. That's why the government hates veterans. So I disagree overall 
on that point from Bear Independent. Now, for all my engineer brothers in the Patriot and Militia movements, always remember, Essayons.